Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered, a random moment with Pastor David. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We know on Tuesdays that we discuss current events, and on, on Thursdays we talk more about your previous message or something that pertains to biblical principles. But today, Pastor, I wanted your feedback on something I heard from John MacArthur. I came across a video that uh, John was speaking about the importance of voting. And he mentioned something along the lines that a true Christian cannot vote Democratic. Wow. <laughs> and he was, he was talking about how uh, this particular party is in supportive of abortions and, and many of the different things. And, uh, and he was saying that uh, Christians, if they're true Christians and they have this moral agent within them, that it would be difficult for them to vote Democratic. And so I wanted your uh -huh. feedback and opinion on something, a statement made such as That's this. That's a pretty strong statement now, isn't it? You know, because we all know that uh, just because somebody has an R after their name, Republican, <laughs> that that doesn't make them righteous. Just because it's an R doesn't mean they're righteous, right? <laughs> and so D, you know, Democrat, or are righteous or Republican? You know that's a big that's a big question. Uh, I I did hear that I did hear that statement and um, and let me begin by saying I highly regard uh, John MacArthur uh, as a, a very astute theologian, very principled man, and in many ways I'd say John a hero of the faith and uh, courageous and and he does he does present to us an unvarnished gospel it's because of those qualifications and his many years of faithfully proclaiming the gospel faithfully uh, defending the things of faith and as i've said to you before uh, were i in an argument with somebody theologically it would be nice to have him in my pocket <laughs> so I could pull him out and say, John, can you answer that, right? I mean, I do highly regard him. We, as Calvary Chapel Ministries, you know, we do have differences um, with his theology in some areas. But 99% of the things that, that John teaches are, are things that we agree with, you know, and, and I for many years have, have used his commentaries and listened to to, to what he's had to say because my training, my background theologically in college is pretty much the same as his. As a matter of fact, it was the same as his and therefore there are many points of agreement that I would have with him. And again, I highly respect him as a, a not just a master, but a doctor of theology, right? So with all of that said, to try and answer the question, I think that what he's saying when he explains it, when he says that the platform of the Democrat Party stands for things that the Bible says are sinful. He's right. When he says that the uh, Democratic Party pushes the LBGTQ agenda, and as Christians, that's, a, that's an agenda we cannot support. He's right. When he speaks concerning abortion and the fact that the de Democratic Party, even though it has a Catholic president um, and the Catholic Church officially is pro-life and yet this Catholic president is is pro-abortion well I think John's right if you truly are a Bible believing Christian then you're supposed to vote your conscience as the as a platforms of that particular gover, uh, governing body uh, as closely as it may align with your own morals. And so I personally will not, will not vote for a Democrat. I will not. I will not because the whole body of their, of their platform is what I preach against every time I proclaim the gospel. How could I violate scripture by doing such a thing as voting for that platform? Because that's what you're voting for. And it amazes me how that the Republican Party, 
will present themselves as being the moral party when in fact they're no more moral than any Democrat in many ways because power has corrupted them and their desire to retain their office has motivated them and every, every you know, say they're holding office for four years or whatever, every, every three years they do what they want and then the fourth year suddenly they become, you know, they're, they're campaigning. So I, I, I frankly, uh, I don't trust um, every politician. They have to prove themselves to me. Now, what would happen if a Democrat was actually saying things that I agree with? What if much of what he said, like Manchin, you know, from what is it, West Virginia, West Virginia. much of what he has to say are, would be things that perhaps I agree with. Would I vote for him? And the answer is no. Why not? Because he still represents a party that is anti-God in many ways. I mean, they even went so far as to strike God out of some of the things that they say they're in Congress and also, you know, I can't vote for them. So I, I, I believe that, uh, that John's comments uh, are comments that I agree with, though the way he would say those things, and he doesn't mind an argument with anybody, um, <laughs> the way he would say that, I, I have a tendency of uh, toning down some of that rhetoric and just trying to speak concerning the subject matter at hand. And so, no, I, I, I cannot, will not, have not, voted for a Democrat. Now, I also believe that many, as a matter of fact, I know, because there have been polls demonstrating this, that many Bible-believing Christians refuse to vote. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is a violation of your conscience. I think that you really ought to uh, express your morals through your vote. That's what you do. And there are millions of Christians that did not vote in the last election. There were millions of Christians who didn't vote in the recall effort of uh, Newsom. And they say, it's a waste of my time. No, it's not. It's, it's a way of, of, in a concrete way, expressing your moral beliefs. Do you or do you not want this person running this state? And instead of saying, he doesn't line up with what I believe, look what he's done Look what's happening to California. You know, I'll tell you, John, you know, I was born here, raised here. I am a, a Californian. Um, didn't move into California because I like the beaches or the weather. Born and raised here. My wife is the sixth or seventh generation Californian. We are Californians. And to see what, what the Democrat government has done to my my state that I live in, the amount of taxes, the amount of prices for gasoline, the fact that a trillion plus gallons of, of rainwater are poured into the ocean and drying up our, our agricultural uh, centers here because of a fish or a snail. It's amazing. And people are actually voting these people in. The definition of insanity is to repeat the same behavior expecting a different result. Every, every election, Californians are voting in people who are destroying this beautiful state, a state I grew up in, a state I love very much, a state that I never wanted to leave. But look at the people exodusing from California. And yeah, I think that we have to really think these things through. And would I vote for a government that does that? Absolutely not. I believe every Christian should vote their conscience and look and see what the Democrat Party actually represents. Everything that I teach against when I teach the Bible. Everything. You know, I don't get it. And so I think that John has a point, and, and, and I would not argue with that. I agree with him in that. I don't say it the way that he says it, because John has more gravitas than I do. He is, he is much more well-versed in those things. He fought, he fought uh, against the closure of churches and was willing to take California to court for it. He's a hero to the churches today. He's a hero, and, and I highly regard him. I simply would not say things in the exact manner he does, but I respect him because he doesn't pull any punches and he tells the truth. And so do I agree with him? 
Yeah, I wouldn't go so far as to you make that a litmus test of your beliefs in Christ, but I would certainly say that's a litmus test to your understanding of Scripture. Right. And so uh, there may be some of this. We're talking about voting, and I can already hear, see some of the comments that may be posted. Yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we, as Christians, we have a responsibility Absolutely. to vote. Absolutely. And to vote our conscience and to vote biblically. But you know what, John? I, I, I'm no hero. I'm certainly no war hero. But I did serve this, this nation in the military, and I know that my sacrifice and the sacrifice of millions of others guaranteed the right for people to vote. And for them to not vote is to, is to dishonor the memory of those who actually died to give them the privilege of doing that. And if they don't understand that, perhaps it's time that they think it, think it through. Right. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for that. Wanted to get your feedback on that. Yeah. I, we watched the video, and he was John was pretty strong. He's straight, but uh, it was. Uh, but I think something that that as Christians we need to to hear. And so, Pastor, thank you so much for uh, your time, church family. Tomorrow evening, which is Wednesday, we have the Katinas coming. Yeah, they're going to lead us in worship and action. They're just going to take over the whole Wednesday night yep. service. And That'd so, be great. invite your friends and family. We're going to have a great time. And if you've never heard the Katinas, you have to come out. Oh, and I love see those them. guys. They're amazing. Uh, angelic for sure their voices yeah. uh, so come on out and join us and then we have our Sunday uh, morning services at 8 30 and 10 45 we look forward to having you come out as Pastor David's taking us through the book of Mark and yeah. so uh, thank you guys for tuning in God bless you and Pastor David thank you so much of course and will you guys have a nice afternoon